Hi, my name is Shristi and welcome to day 21 of the 30 day Mean Stack Honolulu Challenge. Today we're going to work on our, or continue working on our customers um, modals. Uh, we're going to actually format out our update customer modal. So what we're actually looking to do is create something that looks a little bit like this. So on a mobile device we want it to look like this and on a, um, a tablet or desktop or TV type device we want it to look something like this. Um, and we want to use some of the styles that Bootstrap provides um, for us when we're dealing with modal. So let's, um, let's just quickly reiterate to where we left off um, yesterday. So yesterday if we go across to our main app um, just go across to customers and list customers. Um, we left off with um, our, our new kind of link into our update customer model. So for example, if I click on Peter, um, I can see Peter's name appear in this edit customer model. I'll just click off there. If I click on Mary, I can see Mary appear. And if I click on Ali, I can see Ali appear. Now, um, I mentioned yesterday that I could update details here. So for example, um, I'll change Ali to say Tanya. Um, and you can see as I'm typing, it's actually updating um, back here on the view. And, and that's just because um, uh, what we're actually doing here is sharing the same scope between these two, um, these two levels. So between the, the modal window and the view that's sort of sitting behind it. If I click on update here, that doesn't really do anything. It's not hooked into any functions on the controller. But if I close this modal now, and you looked at um, this, um, who used to be Ali, if you looked at her name, it now says Tanya. And you might be thinking, oh wow, we've updated the customer record, but we haven't. We haven't actually sent any of these details back to the database because our function isn't actually sitting in our controller for update anymore. Okay, so um, how could I test that? Well, easily just if I refresh this page, um, Ali would reappear because we haven't we haven't saved that um, that name change. Um, so so let's just see that. So there you go. So there's a confirmation of that, right? So what we're going to do today is um, we're gonna we're gonna focus on actually formatting out this modal window, and we want it to. Um, reuse some of the um, some of the uh, classes that Bootstrap provides to us. So I'm just going to go over to um, uh, Angular UI or, or UI Bootstrap and just jump down to Modal. Um, and when I click on one of these modals, um, you can see that there's sort of some formatting that the modals kind of have. They've got um, sort of a section at the top and then a section down the bottom with the with actual buttons. Um, now what we can do is we'll just copy this as a template and we'll start to um, plug our data into it. So we just go down to markup and um, we'll just uh, let's let's copy um, these items here. So we'll just grab uh, everything between the modal the div with the modal header. Um, down to the last div um, for modal footer. So they're sort of everything inside the script tags if you like. So I'll copy that. Um, and what we're going to do is just jump across, go to um, so we're in our we're in our app, we go to public, modules, customers, and just down to views, um, and then just across to edit. Okay, so this is um, this is where the details are uh, that are currently appearing in that modal window. Now before I paste in that data, um, I'm going to do a couple of things um, to this particular um, view. Firstly, I'm going to um, remove this ng init for find one because we don't need that anymore. We're pushing through the customer details so we don't need um, a separate function to go and do a search. Um, and we're going to change um, the reference to this particular controller. Um, so if you remember, so we we'll go across to our controllers, go to customers, client controller, um, and we'll just go down, just have another look at the controllers that we have. So we've got a customers controller, we've got a customers create controller, and we've got a customers edit controller. Um, now just as an aside, a couple of people have mentioned to me or asked me why I called it edit and not update um, to align to the, the CRUD 
um, model of create, uh, read, update, delete. Um, if you want to call that update, by all means, you can call that update. Um, so you can just go with update. That's that's absolutely fine. But what we want to do is we want to use um, this controller. And um, you can just copy this. And I know we've just copied over um, the details we covered before, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is just... Um, so we're in, we're in the edit customer client view. We just go to the controller at the top and we're just going to paste in customers update controller. Okay, now just go back to Angular, Angular UI and just copy those items again between the script um, and then just paste that in here. So give, give yourself a little bit of space and we'll just paste in um, this kind of structure for us. And we're going to just slowly move um, these bits of code into our, um, our relevant sections, okay? So firstly, what we're going to do is we've got sort of this H3 kind of um, class at the top, and within that we're going to move um, edit customer. So we're going to move remove the item modal and put in edit customer, and then that can go. So once we've, um, once we've moved it, we just get rid of it. Um, grab everything that's sitting in modal body. Um, because if we go back to our wireframes, we want this um, this update page to look something like this. And funnily enough, this is very similar to what we've done previously on our um, on our create customer page. So our new customer page, we had something like this. Um, what that what that means is I'm going to get rid of this this form group with a form control of name and so on and so forth. That can go. Um, this uh, input of update um, or the submit with the update and the button class. I'm gonna I'm gonna just pull these two things out for now. I'm just gonna push them down the bottom and just kind of put them outside of um, outside the rest of that code because I'm gonna reuse them um, once I've plugged the rest of the code in. Um, and then we just grab what's left and put that into our modal body. Okay, so that's what we're looking like. So that was nice and easy. Um, and what we're actually going to do next is go across to create customer. So we just grab from the top um, fill set tag all the way down to the bottom one. And we are we are going to get to remove a couple of these items once we've um, pasted it in, but we'll keep it for now. So we're just Copy that, um, go across to edit, and um, you can just remove fuel set because we've copied that uh, and paste that in here. Okay, so that now gives us that structure that we had before. Now, as part of that structure, we've got these um, these error classes and the um, error details, so we can delete that from the bottom. We don't need error anymore. Um, so the key thing that we've got left behind. It are these details for actually providing our update and we'll get to that. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull out um, this, uh, the, the button um, that's at the bottom of the page for save and close. Um, and the reason I'm going to do that is just to align it back to our, um, our, our divs where we've got OK and cancel. We're going to look at um, reusing um, those those items. So if you don't feel comfortable deleting it, you can just move it down to the bottom if you want to keep a reference. Yeah, that's that's fine too. Okay, now if we just left this code as it was, we actually can't um, reuse it for our purposes. So if we left it as it was, let's just have a look at what would happen. So just save that and pop over to our app. Um, let's just see what that does. So if we open up our modal now, our modal um, opens up, which is which is pretty cool. Um, but there's no data in any of these fields, right? So Peter's name is not coming across like it did um, before. So you might be thinking, okay, well, what's what's kind of going on there? Well, that's fairly uh, fairly easy to solve. We actually haven't um, kind of hooked these particular fields back into our customer scope. Okay, so we can do that. We'll just jump back um, and we just have to prefix our ng data models for all of our data. So what we need to do is uh, we need to refer in our customer's client controller. 
Okay, so we're dealing with this scope of customer. We actually need to refer to that scope. So if we um, just go to the edit customer, I'm so sorry that I'm jumping around everywhere. Um, and we just work through our fields one at a time. So where we find for first name, we've got this um, ng model. We just need to plug in customer dot. And just copy that and just move that into the next one. So surname, suburb, country, just customer dot. Um, but everywhere we've got the ng models, phone, um, email, referred, channel, and industry. Okay, so oops, I put it into the wrong place. Didn't do that. Put it into the model. Um, okay, so that now has our, our our reference when we're dealing update modal. Um, but we still we do also want to alias our update controller as well. So we will give this an alias. So we'll call that um, as um, uh, cast demo. CTRL. There's no references of that at the moment, but we will um, use that when we're referring to our function. So let's just have a look at um, at how that looks now. Make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Um, so if I click on Peter Carlson now, I can now see the details for Peter Carlson appearing um, in this view. Now, strangely, I've got the sort of um, strange kind of outline um, going on up here um, just about first name so let's have a look at what what's going on there um, and the reason for that um, just looks like this um, this use of a form horizontal so we'll pull that out as we have previously and the other thing we'll do is we'll just pull out the column d12 as well so just remove the div outside the form because um, our, our modal will um, will take care of that for us. Let's close that, let that refresh. All right, so when we look at that again, that's nice and clean. We've got a clean line. We've got our details for our customer. Um, and that's where we're going to leave it for today. Tomorrow, what we'll do is focus on these buttons that we've got at the bottom. Um, and we'll look at hooking in our update function to actually be able to send the details for the customer that we've updated back to um, MongoDB. Um, so please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out bossable.com for more details and I'll see you tomorrow.